Hello all, welcome to Automata Theory and Computability. So today we will see what is this Automata Theory and Computability. So we will go with the introduction part. So first let us see what is computation. So the theory of computation, it's a theoretical branch of computer science and mathematics, which mainly deals with the logic of computation with respect to simple machines referred to as Automata. So why actually we need any uh, computation is nothing but we wanted to work on the machines. So for that purpose, we have to have a machine. So that simple machine we refer to as automata here. So the automata enables the scientists to understand how machines compute the functions and solve problems. So it is not like for a uh, simple uh, uh, machine as such. So automata is actually a, uh, an abstract machine. Okay, or it is a virtual machine. So why this automata? Why the automata theory is that? See, the main motivation behind developing the automata theory was to describe and analyze the dynamic behavior of discrete systems. You know what is dynamic behavior? It keeps changing every now and then. Okay, as and when required, the behavior keeps changing. So to analyze that kind of behavior, of the system we need to have one machine or we need to have a theory which is known as automata theory and uh, now let us see what is finite automata see automata is a machine we know so let us see what is finite automata so finite automata is a mathematical model used to study the abstract machines with the inputs chosen from the signal input symbol here so abstract machine, okay, I have made it as it's a mathematical model to study the abstract machine. So what is this abstract machine? It is a theoretical model. In fact, it does not exist in real time. So it's a conceptual or a theoretical model of a computer hardware or software system. It's like a simulator. Okay, it's an abstract machine or also we call it as it's a virtual machine which actually does not exist but we will try to simulate it and then we will try to get the values or output. Okay, so what is this sigma? Sigma is nothing but it is a set of alphabets. See, in uh, normal English, we will say alphabets means A, B, C, D, etc. till Z. Okay, whereas in automata theory, alphabets are nothing but, you know, we can have letters like this, A or B or Z, anything. And of course, even you can have digits as well. So, sigma is a set of alphabets using which any string can be obtained. So, let us say my input alphabets are A and B, only A and B. So, uh, we know we can go for inputs like or we can go for strings like a, A, B, A, B, B, or A, B, or just A's five times, B, A, B, A, B, A, any, any kind of string can be formed using these input symbols. Similarly, with 0, 1 also, I can have, I can generate so many strings like this. Of course, not only this, sometimes, you know, you can have A, B, 0, 1, all of them as input alphabets. So, through that, we can generate any number of strings here. Okay, so we should be knowing that string uh, that is a sigma is nothing but input symbol. Okay, it is known as input symbol. So we call it as a set uh, input symbol, which is nothing but a set of alphabets. So what do we do after reading the string? So on reading the string, the machine may accept the string or reject the string. That means, let us say I have an uh, input string like this. So upon reading zero, then followed by zero, then followed by one, followed by zero, again followed by zero. That means what? I have read the string zero, zero, one, zero, zero successfully. So we can say the abstract machine automata has accepted my string. So this is what it means. Okay? Finite automata. Okay? So let us just take a very simple example. Let us say I have a switch. I have a switchboard which is having one switch. So when I just push that uh, switch button, okay, the light will be on. Similarly, when I push it again, again, the light will be off here. So this is one of the most 
simple examples we can give for finite automata. And also you should be knowing where all this finite automata is used. Okay. Let us say I'm giving one more example. Almost all of you have Googled out uh, many things, okay, on internet. So sometimes, you know, what happens? I wanted to search for a word. Let us say I wanted to search for automata. As soon as you just say A, U, T or something, then you will have so many different combinations of strings which are available or so many different combinations of sentences which are available. So what happens is, Actually, the internet or the machine or your system is trying to match what you want, what you have input that is trying to be matched with different strings here. Are you getting it? So this is one example of finite automata. That means the virtual machine, finite automata, is trying to match whatever input you give that is matching with different combinations here. So whichever is matching, you will get the successful output there. Okay, so let us see how it is possible. Let me say I'm just starting with one uh, uh, one machine. Let us say this is like one state of the machine here. Okay, initially it is not having any other input as such. Okay, so as soon as I say, as soon as I go uh, read one uh, input say T, then the machine will move to the next state and the machine is having the letter t now okay now after reading t i want to read one more letter or one more input symbol h now so as soon as it reads h it again the machine is into a new state and the string which is accepted is th now so as of now my string is th similarly i can read e so the new state will have the string THE, then I'm reading N. So upon reading N, I'm reading the word or string THEN, then I am reading. In fact, I really wanted to read the string then. So when I say I'm reading one letter or one input symbol at a time, after these four inputs, I'm getting the string THEN. So when you say it is THEN then, that means yes, this machine has accepted the string then. Okay, so how do we represent that? Okay, the machine has accepted the strings using this double circle or concentric circle. We call it as accepting state here. Okay, similarly, let us say I wanted to read uh, something else, let us say. So I'm reading T first. I'm reading H, then I'm reading, after reading TH, my new state will be TH. But instead of reading E, I'm reading I now, right? Okay, so THI, again I'm reading S. So this I'm reading. So this is also correct. I, re I also wanted to read this again. Okay, so in this case, this is also my accepting state. So, you should know that in every day you will be Google, Googling all the things. So in that case, whatever string you wanted to give, that is trying to be matched with, uh, you know, the different combinations what you use in the dictionary. So this is one of the applications of finite automata. String matching, we call it as string matching. Now, uh, the real applications of finite automata, we have many. One is in traffic lights. Let us see how it is possible. Then in vending machines, coffee machine or tea machine or chocolate vending machine, anything. Then in elevators, then speech recognition, compiler construction, very, very important. Then string matching. I think I just now uh, you know showed that. And then string processing. And then in, uh, you know, in communication protocols. Okay, so these are some of the applications what we find in the real world. Okay, so let us see one example that is uh, the traffic light here. Uh, see, everybody must have, uh, you know, observed this that, okay, let us see my state, okay, in the traffic signal, in the traffic signal, uh, uh, right now we are at red signal. 
okay and i wanted the red signal to be for 20 seconds okay so what happens is the timer has to be continuously self looped that means it has to continuously in the same state red state okay in the same red state it has to be for 20 minutes let's say 19 minutes for that matter okay so as soon as the timer becomes 20 as soon as the timer becomes 20 it moves to the green signal okay and the traffic and the vehicles start moving let us say for 14 seconds the timer will be on and the vehicles keep moving for 14 seconds so that means what for 14 seconds i have to be in the same state that is green state okay now after uh, 15 14 minutes uh, 14 seconds that is uh, when the timer becomes 15 the second then it has to move to the next state orange state so it has to wait for let us say for five seconds or four seconds so the timer has to be uh, for four seconds and it has to be in the same state which is orange state and once the timer becomes five it moves to the red signal and this process keeps continuing okay so this is what you know we find the application of finite automata so this is how the symbols we will be using in finite automata okay we will see each of those things in detail later then we will see one vending machine let's say i wanted to have a tea or a coffee kind here okay so you will have place for uh, you know placing the coin let's say the, 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 the coin as soon as you uh, insert the coin then only the next state will appear saying do you want coffee or tea okay so again when you click on t or something then only the next process will be done that means what one process this the machine is at one stage then after inserting a coin it moves to the next state after selection tea or coffee then only it moves to the next state so this process is one real good example of finite automate okay. similarly we will see one compiler construction okay i think almost all of you have worked with some of the compilers like c compiler or uh, java compiler anything okay so whenever we say it is a compiler you know every statement in any programming language has to be uh, you know divided into different tokens okay so the division of tokens we call it as lexical analysis so this lexical analysis what it does is it will take a statement or an expression and it will be identified or it will be identifying or it will be finding out whether which token it is whether it is an identifier whether it is an operator whether it is a special symbol or whatever okay so that division or identification of these tokens is known as lexical analysis so what this lexical analyzer will do it it, it breaks the input text into various tokens here okay so let us take one example so in this example it is given sum is equal to num1 plus num2 semicolon it's a simple c statement so whenever using this lexical analyzer what happens with this lexical analyzer means it will take sum okay and it breaks into one identifier okay so and it will be taken as an identifier similarly the next symbol is equal symbol that is taken as an operator the next symbol is num1 taken as identifier the next one is plus operator again it is it is plus so it is an operator then num2 identifier and a semicolon that is a separator so that you know division of uh, the expression into different tokens uh, will be carried out using lexical analysis and to do this we need finite automata so using the finite automata this breaking up of the statement into different identifiers or different tokens will be made one more example i think we can give this is a simple example i think i can give uh, all of you know how to uh, uh, write or how, what are the rules for naming an identifier 
So identifier, let us say in a C language. So an identifier is uh, always starting with a letter or an underscore, of course. Yeah, underscore as on now, I have just skipped out. So we assume that uh, an identifier will always start with a letter. It can be uppercase letter or a lowercase letter. And then it can be followed by any number of letters or digits or underscore. And then, you know, it will terminate. So the same concept, let us try putting it to a finite automata. So what happens is, let us say I'm beginning with the finite automata machine. Then I will read one letter. After reading one letter, the machine is into a new state. Okay. And, lay, and it can have any number of letters or digits. So we call it as a self loop. Okay. Self loop means it can read letter or a digit, any number. Zero or more number of letters or digits, it, it can read. So after reading, it can read even zero. Okay. Zero letter or zero digit. Okay, that means no letter or no digit. But anyway, it has started with a letter, right? So it can have any number of letters or digits and then it will be ending with one delimit. So that means what this finite automata is an example to know that it is an identifier. We are reading an identifier. Then uh, I think uh, this example we saw string matching. So whenever we wanted to uh, check the string, I wanted to match the string. Let us see how it is possible. Let's say I wanted to read the string nice, N-I-C-E. So what happens? We will start, you know, with a the machine. Then I will read N. So N is found. I will read immediately after N is found. It is into a new state N. Then after reading in, I will come to the next, I will input one more letter I. Then after reading I, it will come to the new state I. That means N I read. Now C is also read. Then if I read E, okay, N I C E, nice, I have read it. So the state is success. That means I have read successfully, nice. Suppose at the beginning only have, I have read any other letter, not N. That means what? It is an error. Similarly, let us say I have read N, but afterwards, instead of uh, you know uh, reading I, I have read any other character. Again, it is an error. Similarly, after I, after C, and uh, after E also. So that is what uh, we call it as string matching. I wanted to match a string with exactly whatever I needed. So suppose say I, I have read NIC and I wanted to match with NIC. Then I can go for finite automata. And let us see what are the symbols we use in finite automata. Okay. So first let us see we have a circle and within that I can write any number or Q naught or you know, any letter followed by a, a, a digit here. Usually the suffix one. Okay, so what we usually do is this is known as a state. Okay, so it is a circle. It is used to represent the state of a finite automata. And usually we will always start with Q0. It can be anything else. It can be 0, 1, 2, 3 or Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3 or uh, let's say A0, A1, AB, A2, A3, anything it can. But usually we will take it as Q0. Next, let us see, this is one state. And then I have a state, but preceded by one arrow mark here. Okay, so that means it is an indication that it is the start state. So a circle with arrow, which is not originating from any node, okay, represents start state of the machine. Okay, it is starting with such a uh, uh, state here. Okay? And it is not from any other state. Okay, so that is what we meant. Okay. So the next one, see, I have a double circle. I think we have seen such examples in the previous slides. So Q0, Q1, sorry, Q1 is having double circle. So double circle means it is a, the final state. So this is what we call it as a start state or initial state. And the double circle represents final state or accepting state that means yes my string is accepted so how do we represent that is using double circle okay. so the next one we will see 
I have two states, Q0, Q1, and I have an arrow mark with one here. That means it is, I have a transition, I have input, I have input the symbol one, upon reading the symbol one, now my current state is Q0. That means I am in state Q0. Upon reading the input symbol one, my state has changed to Q1. So that is what it means. That means there is a transition, there is a change of state from Q0 to Q1 upon reading the input symbol one. So how do we represent that is using delta. Delta stands for now transition function. So delta of Q0, that means the current state comma upon which input symbol. Okay, delta of the current state comma which input symbol is equal to the new state. Okay, so delta of Q0 comma 1 is equal to Q1. Delta of Q0 comma 1 is equal to the new state Q1. So this is like one transition from, just look at the arrow, this is forward arrow. Okay, so it is a transition. Now look at this one. This is like a self loop. That means upon reading uh, 0, my current state is Q0. Upon reading 0, I will, I will come back to the same state. Okay. So the machine is in state Q0. Upon reading the input symbol 0, it remains in the same state Q0. I think you must uh, recall the example of uh, traffic light let's say for 14 seconds it will be in the red in the red state okay so it has to be in the same state so we call it as self loop okay so how do we represent delta again it is delta of q0 comma 0 is equal to the new state is again q0 itself okay next let us see we have q0 q1 but instead of just having one input symbol I have two symbols separated by a comma here. So the machine is in state Q0 and upon reading 0 or 1, it is either 0 or 1. You can't read, you know, both the symbols at a time. Okay, it is either 0 or 1. So upon reading 0 or 1, it comes to the new state Q1. So since it is or, I will have two transitions. Delta of Q0 comma 0 is equal to Q1. Delta of Q0 upon 1 is Q1. Here. 